us pray. Thank you, Lord, for your guidance and for protecting us and also the blessings. Amen. Hi, everyone. Welcome to our online Sunday school. We just finished the story of William Carey, right? But actually, there is more. This morning, Teacher Albis will be telling us how the Bible spoke to William Carey. So, join me as we discover the various symbols of the Bible and how can we relate it to our own Christian lives. Enjoy! What do we use a mirror for? To look at ourselves. Why do we do that? Perhaps to check whether our hair is combed or whether our face is clean. The mirror helps us to see ourselves as we really are. The Bible is like a mirror. As we read it or hear it, it shows us our faults and sins, what we are like on the inside. When we see things that are wrong with ourselves, we can do something about them. If you look in the mirror and see that your hair is in a mess and needs combing, do you walk away and forget to do it? Of course not. Listen to what the Bible says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like a man who looks at his face in a mirror and, after looking at himself, goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. When William Carey was a boy, he was not interested in the Bible and did not read it, although he did hear or read it every week in church. When William Carey was a boy, he was not interested in the Bible and did not read it, although he did hear or read it every week in church, nor had he received the Lord Jesus into his life. When he was learning to be a shoemaker, he was once given a present of one shilling. But when he went to spend the shilling, he discovered it was worth nothing because it was fake. He also had some money in his pocket belonging to the man he worked for. So he spent this man's good shilling and when he returned home, he gave his fake shilling to the man. Of course, he hoped the man would not notice but he did. William told a lie about it, but the man checked up and found that William was not telling the truth. William felt so ashamed. He realized the words in the Bible were true. He did need to give his life to God. It was just as if he was looking into the mirror of the Bible and seeing how bad he really was. So, not very long afterwards, he asked God to forgive him and come into his life. Now, at the age of 18, William Carey had become a true believer. He did not just know about God, now he knew God personally. Do not be surprised if there are times in your life when the Holy Spirit shows you that you are doing something wrong by reminding you of words in the Bible such as do not lie or do not steal. It is like he is holding up the mirror of God's word in front of you so you can see what is wrong. After a baby is born, what does it need to help it grow? Yes, milk. And when a person becomes a Christian believer, they need plenty of milk to help them grow stronger as a Christian. What is our milk? The Bible. In the Bible, it says, like newborn babies desire or really want pure spiritual milk so that by drinking it, you may grow up in your salvation. After William opened up his life to Jesus, he spent many hours reading the Bible and listening to it being taught at a church in a nearby village. 
as he drank the milk of God's word, it made him strong as a Christian. Now, after a baby has drunk some milk, can you see it suddenly grow? No, you cannot see the effect of one drink. But, as it keeps drinking week after week, you notice it is growing little by little. In the same way, as we read and hear God's word, we may not notice any difference in our Christian life each time we read. In fact, sometimes you might read some verses and think, <laughs> I got nothing special from those verses. But if we keep reading and listening, then little by little, we will grow closer to God. What happens to the baby if it completely stops drinking milk? It will gradually die. And if we stopped reading or listening to God's words in the Bible, our Christian lives will gradually die. So, it is important to have a regular bottle of milk by reading the Bible yourself or listening to someone else reading it. Did you know that the Bible is also like a hammer? A hammer can break things down. Here is how it worked through William's life. As William looked at the globe he made showing all the countries of the world, he thought a lot about the people in these countries who did not know about the true God. Back in those times, there were no missionaries going from England to other countries. God clearly spoke to William through verses such as Mark chapter 16 verse 15 which says, Go into all the world and preach the good news to all creation. He began talking to friends about the need to send out people to teach the Christian gospel to the heathen. Heathen was the word used back then to describe people who did not know the true God. At every chance he had, he would try to interest people in mission work. But no one seemed interested. In fact, one day when he wanted to talk about it, a senior minister told him, Sit down, young man. If God wants to convert the heathen, he will do it without your help or mine. William did not give up. He kept talking to different people about Jesus' command in Mark chapter 16, verse 15, to go into all the world. It was like he was banging away with a hammer trying to smash down their lack of interest. And as William Carey kept on speaking about the need for missionaries, the power of God's words began to break down the opposition. Gradually, more people started to agree with him. Eventually, in 1792, William and some other ministers formed the first missionary society to send out missionaries to far-off countries. It had taken a long time, but as William spoke from the Bible, the verses had been working like a hammer to change the hard hearts and wrong attitudes of these men. Sometimes when we have a hard heart, we have to keep hearing the same words from the Bible hammering away at us until we give in and do what God wants. Now, who can tell me what we use a lamp or torch for? Without the light from a lamp or torch on a dark night, we would be in danger of bumping into things or falling over as we move about. As the light shines, it shows us the pathway ahead. There is something God has given us that is like a light that shows us what to do and where to go in our lives. What do you think that thing is? Yes, the Bible. There is even a verse in the Bible that says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. As we read God's words in the Bible, they can show us clearly what direction to take and where to go. This is what happened to William Carey after he formed the Missionary Society. He asked God, What do you want me to do now, Lord? Do you want me to be the one to go, or is there someone else you have chosen? 
he was asking God to guide him. Then, as he read the Bible in Isaiah chapter 54, verse 6, God spoke to him through these words written in the verse, For the Lord has called you. Straight away, William knew that God was answering his question. It was as if those six words in the verse were like a lamp showing him what to do. They were lighting up the pathway he should take in his life. He knew now that God had chosen him to go as a missionary. Whenever you need God to guide you or show you what to do next, you can know that His Word, the Bible, will be like a light to you. As you read it, sooner or later, you will read words that God is using to show you what to do. Now, if you are walking along a road and you become very hot and dry and thirsty, and you are covered in dust, what do you need? Yes, water! As you drink the water, it refreshes your body on the inside and you can use water to wash away the dust and dirt on the outside. The Bible is like water to a Christian. When we are discouraged or afraid to face hard times, the words in the Bible can wash away our discouragement and fear. And this is just what happened for William Carey. After William and his family had arrived in India, he faced some very difficult times. Can you remember what they were? They did not have enough money. They had nowhere to live. And his wife was very unhappy. It was easy for him to feel discouraged. But one thing kept him going. What was it? William kept on reading the Bible, and as he did so, God encouraged him and helped him to keep going. Every time some terrible new thing happened, like his son dying of fever, or the printing building burning down, he kept on going by getting strength from the Bible. The words he read refreshed him like a drink of water. Christians often give up reading the Bible when they get discouraged. But those are the very times we need to read it the most. That is when we need a drink from God to refresh us and wash away the discouraged feelings. What else is the Bible like? Well, it is like a sword. What is a sword used for? To fight against an enemy in battle. So when do you think we should use the Bible as a sword? Yes, when we need to fight against an attack on us from our enemy, Satan. Paul wrote in the Bible, Take up the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. William Carey had many attacks against himself and his work for God. William knew he could not fight against these attacks by his own words or in his own strength. In each case, he used words from the Bible as his weapons to win the fight. Can you guess what I have here? They are seeds. These particular ones are X seeds. So, if I plant them in the ground, what will I expect to grow? Yes, X. But if I plant them today, Will I get a crop of X by the end of the week? Why not? Seeds take time to grow, especially for the plant to become mature. When you are growing things, you must be very patient. Even though you cannot see the fully grown plant for a long time, you have faith that it will grow. The words of God in the Bible are like seeds. When they are planted in our hearts and minds, they are like seeds that can grow. Sometimes God speaks to us as we read the Bible and makes a promise to us that He will do a certain thing for us. That promise in God's Word is like a seed planted inside us. Often, it can take a long time for those words to come true and for the thing to happen to us. 
But if we have faith and patience, God's words will be like a seed that eventually grows up and God will keep his promises to us. William Carey found out how true this was. He believed the verse in Matthew chapter 28 verse 19 where Jesus told his followers, Go and make disciples of all nations. But when William was a young man, most other Christians did not believe these words were meant for them. So, William wrote a book explaining why it was very important for Christians to obey this verse and go to nations where people did not know the true God. This verse and the others he used and explained in his book were like seeds planted in the hearts of those who read his book. Little by little, they grew, and as time went by, dozens, then hundreds, then thousands of Christians started to believe and obey these verses from the Bible. First, William Carey was sent from England to make disciples in India. Then, many more were sent, not only to India, but to different nations around the world. The seeds of God's word that William planted in his book grew until there was a great harvest of missionaries. A harvest that is still growing today as large numbers of Christians are being sent out to make disciples in other states and nations. So you see how the whole of William Carey's life was centered on the Bible. And the Bible became all these things to him. What does it mean when we say the Bible is like a mirror? How is the Bible like our milk? In what ways is the Bible like a hammer? Will you let the Bible become your light, your mirror, your water, your milk? Will you let the Bible become your light, your mirror, your water, your milk, and your sword? Perhaps right now you want to thank God for His words written in the Bible and tell Him that you want the Bible to be the center of your life, so He can speak to you through it just as it was at the center of William Carey's life. Let's pray. Father God, thank you very much for giving us your word, the Bible. Thank you for using it to change William Carey's life and to strengthen him to reach out to Indian people and the rest of the world. May you plant this desire inside of us as well even though we are still kids, we know that you can use us in mighty ways. Please use your words to be the center of our lives. Thank you. Amen. i